Hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and in this video here, I'm going to be showing you all, well, a little bit of a community-driven effort which is really helped out by people such as yourself who might have a old original Xbox sitting around with some content on it that has not been archived yet. This is going to be going into an application which was recently released called XCAT, otherwise known as the Xbox Content Archive Tool. And as it says on console mods, this is a utility that runs directly on an Xbox console to assist in finding unarchived DLC and other lost content. When run, the application will scan the Xbox hard drive for any content that has yet to be archived and upload it directly to the servers of the XCAT team for later analysis, sorting, and archival. So you can check out more information information on this, however it is looking at your drives and cache and such because it is looking for unarchived DLC as well as homebrew dashboard skins, Xbox Live message of the day files, long lost game pack mods, and a lot more community made content. So again, like I said, if you have a old original Xbox that has some content on it that might not have been archived, it might be good to hook it up to your network and run XCAT on here. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing on this video, I'm actually going to be showing a few methods of doing this here because XCAT is not just limited to having a modified Xbox like I have right here. You can do this on a soft modded Xbox, a hard modded Xbox, and even a stock Xbox. As long as you can have your Xbox up and running and you can get connected to the internet, you can get XCAT running on there and help the XCAT team get this content archived in case there's any content on your system that has yet to be archived. Now let's go ahead and get the prerequisites for hardware and software out of the way. In addition to having your original Xbox up and running and connected to the internet, you might need a few extra things if you have a stock Xbox. For this here, if you have a completely stock system, there's one of two routes we can take. One of the most common ones here is using a USB adapter such as this and a USB drive. If you've gone through a soft mod process using this, you're probably familiar with this here, but you're going to need a cable like this if you go through the USB method. For the most part, it doesn't really matter where you get these cables from, you could even make your own. Generally, the sooner you get one, for example if you get one on Amazon, you're going to pay a little more. This one here is $7.99 USD, however if you want to save a little bit more money, you can get one on eBay or AliExpress. The links for all the products will be down below in the description. And if you're using the USB method, you are going to need a USB drive. Now typically I recommend getting the smallest and really oldest USB drive that you can find around your house, but if you do have to end up purchasing one here, end up getting a small one here. These swivel ones like this have worked for me on different systems, and you're going to want to get something like a 512 megabyte, a 256 megabyte, even if you have something really small kicking around like a 32 megabyte, that will be great. I'm saying megabyte, not gigabyte here. If you use something like a one gigabyte, a two gigabyte, maybe even a four gigabyte, your mileage may vary on those, but if you're thinking you could just use an eight gigabyte or a 32 gigabyte drive, those are really not going to work on the original Xbox. So you don't need to get a whole pack like this. Something like this, like a small 512 megabyte swivel USB drive, you're going to have better luck with it. Now, if you only have a stock Xbox, you'll probably want to go with the USB drive and adapter. However, if you have another modded Xbox kicking around, whether it is soft modded or hard modded, you could actually use a memory unit here and use that modified Xbox. So just keep that in mind. Now, whether your Xbox is stock, soft modded or hard modded, there is one thing we are going to need, which will be XCAT. And in order to get the latest version of it, you should be able to connect to XBENS on your computer here using something called Pandora. I have a video covering how to set up Pandora on here, but in short, you're going to want to download Pandora by going to the GitHub repository, going to releases, and download the latest build of Pandora for your operating system. Once you have the zip file downloaded, you're just going to want to right click and extract this out using something such as 7-zip into its own directory. I've already done that before because I have run this, but once you have your Pandora directory right here, you just need to come over to the Pandora executable, double click it, and wait for it to open. It will bring up a blank command prompt window like this, but it should also bring up the Pandora GUI, which is exactly what we need. On the left, you're just going to want to navigate over to where you want to save your files to. The Pandora directory is going to work just fine for me, but once you're ready to connect, click on connect and give it a few moments. Once it has connected, you'll see your console lists on the right. You're going to want to go to Xbox, go to console-based applications, go to apps, go down to utilities, and you're going to want to look for XCAT. And once you're in XCAT, you can download the info file for the info as well as the zip. Just right click, download, 
and right click download. Give it a few moments and once these have been downloaded, you can click on disconnect and close out of Pandora. Locate your two downloads here and the first one we can look up is the info, which if you have something such as Notepad++, you can give this a read here in which this is just a info file that contains the information needed on here. So if you're wondering what is collected here, choices, authorization, things like that, you're more than welcome to check this all out. As long as you agree to this and you continue on, you can close out of this and we're going to focus on the xcat zip file. For this, just right click and extract this out right here. Within the xcat folder, we can open this up and we have another info text. We have an executable itself for soft modded and hard modded consoles. And we also have a end game package right here. If you're wondering what this signed one is for, this signed one is one that would really go with end game, for example. Essentially, if you have a hard modded or soft modded Xbox, we're going to use this one. If you have a stock Xbox, we're going to use this package. Now, if you're going to be using the USB method here, we're going to be using fat explorer for this but specifically the beta so you can come to the page linked in the description go over to 3.0 beta and if you have not used this before you can check this all out of course but you're going to want to download and install the .NET desktop runtime as well as the fat explorer beta you'll need the both these here and what i'd recommend is download and install the x64 or 64-bit versions here and if they are not working you're going to have to download and use the 32-bit versions just in case you don't know what your os might be using but for me, I'm going to be using the 64-bit version since I know I have a 64-bit Windows installation. I've already downloaded and installed the .NET desktop runtime, but I'm going to grab the Fat Explorer beta and we should be able to continue on. Once you download Fat Explorer, just right click and extract it out right here, and it should give you a Fat Explorer folder. Inside the Fat Explorer folder, go ahead, open up Fat Explorer and say yes. Now it should look like this and your driver should be installed if you've used this before. However, if you have never used this before, you are going to need to go through the process of installing this driver and then restart your computer and open Fat Explorer yet again. So now that we're at where we need to be, let's go ahead and prepare our USB drive by going over to the original Xbox. Over the console, take your USB drive, connect it to your adapter, and if you're ready, connect it to your console. Now do keep in mind, what we're going to do is going to erase all data we care about from the USB drive we're using, if it is successful. So you're going to want to back up your data that you care about onto your computer, and then insert the USB drive into the adapter and into your console. Once you do that, you can go over to memory, and if you get a message like this saying that the memory unit is not working properly and it has been erased, congratulations, you can hit OK. And check this out, our memory unit is loaded up, so that means that the USB flash drive has been formatted accordingly. If you do not get that error, if nothing shows up, or if you're just getting a strobing screen, then that means that USB drive is not compatible with your system, and you're going to need to find another compatible USB drive, or you'll need to use a memory unit. Or you can always just modify your system if you're capable of doing that. However, if you have a working USB drive, go ahead and disconnect it and bring it over to your PC. Over the PC, plug in your USB drive, and if you're prompted to format it, do not format it. But once it's connected, go to Devices and Fat Explorer, click on Refresh, and make sure your USB drive pops up. Once it pops up, click on it, load device, go ahead, mount it to any available partition, and as you can see, you can now access it. Once it's accessible, you can go into the XCAT folder, go to the XCAT version 1.0 signed in-game zip, right click, and extract it out right here. Once it's been extracted, go into the newly made folder, grab the file and two folders right here, right click, copy, and then right click and paste them to your USB drive. Once they've been pasted, we can close out of everything here, go back to devices, click on this, unmount. Now you can find where your drive is located. I know mine is H, even though nothing is showing up. Right click and eject it. So your USB drive is now ready to go if you're using the USB drive method. Now, if you're going to be using a memory unit setup, this is going to kind of be a cross between a soft modded and hard modded console setup. You're going to need something to access your console over FTP. Use whatever preferred FTP client you use. If you need a recommendation, I personally use WinSCP. You can just go ahead, download this and install it and then open it up. Over your Xbox, make sure it is up and running, running a custom dashboard and connected to your local area network. You can see in the bottom right hand corner of my screen, there is an IP showing up because it is connected to my local IP address. Keep yours in mind because we are going to need that right now. If you're using WinSCP, you can click on new tab, click on remote tab, and then create a new site of FTP, no encryption, 
Your host name should be your IP address for your Xbox, port number is 21, and the username and password will be Xbox, respectively, just like that. All lowercase, all one word. You can log in, and once you have a successful login, we'll just need to see where we need to transfer this to our memory unit. Over at the console, if you have a memory unit, go ahead, plug it into your controller now. What you want to do is now go down to System, go to your File Explorer, wherever it might be, and you're going to want to look for the drive letter. I know mine is drive letter H because it is 8 megabytes in size and I have nothing on here. And if you have any data that you care about on this memory unit, you want to back it up and then you're going to want to highlight it all and delete it. So we're going to be transferring to the H drive in this case. Over at WinSCP, if you've just connected this, you might have to right click, click on refresh, and drive H should now show up. So once we navigate in here, that is our memory unit. We now need to transfer over this signed in-game zip. In order to do that, grab the XCAT signed in-game zip, right click it, and extract it out right here. And it'll give you a new folder. You want to navigate into this folder on WinSCP. Make sure you're seeing the two folders and the payload XBE. Now on the right, navigate over to where your memory unit is, go into the drive letter, right click, and upload. Hit OK and give it a few moments to upload. And once that has been uploaded, we can exit out of here, close out of WinSCP, and we should be good at that point. Now over on your original Xbox, you can physically remove your memory unit, and you can take it over to your stock Xbox for when you want to use it. Now finally, if you have a soft modded or hard modded Xbox, don't worry, we don't need to mess around with memory units, USB drives, adapters, none of that. You just need to make sure your console is on your network, and we're going to access it through FTP. Again, like I said before, you'll need to use your favorite or preferred FTP client, and if you need a recommendation, I'm going to be using WinSCP. Just download this, install it, and open it up. Make sure your Xbox is up and running and connected to your local area network, and you're going to want to look and see that an IP address is showing. As you can see in the bottom right of my screen, my IP address is showing. Take note of yours because you're going to need it right now. Over at WinSCP, you can open up a new remote tab, and then you're going to want to make a new site, do FTP protocol, no encryption, enter in the IP address for your Xbox, port number will be 21, and then the username and password will be Xbox, just like that, all lowercase, one word. And once you're ready to go, click on login. Now you should see your drive shares right here. We'll go ahead and transfer over the XCAT executable, and to do this here, we can go into the XCAT directory. You're going to want to grab the XCAT XBE file, and we're just going to rename this real quick. You can right click it, click on rename, and rename this to default. We do not need the signed one since this is going to be a modified system. Over on the Xbox, navigate over to, I would recommend the E drive, and you can go into either apps or applications, whichever one has your installations right here. I like to put mine in applications, and inside of applications, you can create a new directory by right clicking and hitting new directory and call it XCAT, or whatever else you wanna call it, but XCAT is what makes sense. Go into the XCAT directory, and from here, you're going to want to grab your default.xbe, and you can just drag and drop it to upload it. And there we go, it's been uploaded just like any other application. So now click on close. Now it's been transferred over, so you just need to reload your dashboard or reboot your system. And once either of those have been done, it should show up under applications. Now in order to launch XCAT, there's going to be two options. First of all, if you have a stock Xbox, again, make sure your console is connected to your local area network and has internet access. Then what you're going to want to do is go over to memory, enter this section, and now plug in your USB drive with the adapter or your memory unit. Once you plug either of them in, in order to launch this here, this is using the end game exploit. So you just need to come up here to whichever memory unit you have and tap the A button. It's going to go in and then it's going to crash to this screen here with a orb and the rest of it's going to be black. If you used end game before, you know what's up here. But if you've never used this before, just wait until it gets to a black screen like this. Then you're going to want to wait a little longer for XCAT to load up just like this. If it does not launch as seamlessly as that, you might have to reboot your system and try it again. The other option if you're using a soft modded or hard modded Xbox will be to go down to applications or whatever your application section is, look for XCAT, and then launch it. The good news is here, whichever option you end up using here is going to bring you to the same end goal, which is launching XCAT. So now that XCAT is up and running and you have your console connected to the internet, tap the A button to continue on. If you want to read this privacy disclaimer, I would recommend giving it a read. As long as you understand everything here, you are free to continue on. 
I'm going to go ahead and continue on here. But once you continue, you're going to go through this process where it's going to do the initial connectivity and then it's going to start searching for content on your original Xbox hard drive. Depending on how much content you have and how big your drive is, this might take some time. So just keep this in mind, just leave it here, let it do its thing and be patient. Just as a heads up here, there's going to be many times that it's going to look like nothing is happening or XCAT might be kind of stalled out or something. Really, as long as you are seeing it continue to process content and moving, that means that the application is working. I did talk to my friend Harcroft about this, who said that it can start to slow down once it's uploaded a bunch of files, but it will eventually either finish or crash. If you want to, it might be best to leave this running on your console overnight. However, if you are getting some stalls here and there, you can simply reboot the console, open up XCAT, continue on. It should skip past the files that it has already uploaded and then continue on to the new ones. And when you make a new connection, it usually tends to upload faster on that new connection before slowing back down. All right, so it took several hours for this particular console and it took a few restarts as well too. But as you can see at the end here during the last reboot and scan, I was able to get this completed so any new files were uploaded and of course if you want to before you exit out of this program you can check out the credits so a big thank you and shout out to all these lovely people who are showing up here on screen. But really that is about it for using XCAT. Once it scans through your drive successfully and uploads anything that has not been archived already by the XCAT team, you can just exit out of the program. Anyways, that is about it for this video here. I hope it helped out. I hope it was at least interesting. And if you have any consoles that you might have kicking about that might have some tools that haven't been archived, applications, DLC, title updates, even things such as themes for Unleash X, XBMC, and more, it would definitely be worth running XCAT on here. Just again, my recommendation would be probably run it when you're not really planning to run your Xbox and maybe just connect it and run it overnight. Anyways, that is about it for this video here. This is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too.